going to build out an investment portfolio. And up here at the top, it's not an investment portfolio, where it's a um, it's on the projected investments. So we're going to build a dashboard at the top with our inputs. Inputs are going to go here. And then we're going to do this very basic beginning balance, you know, plus growth equals ending balance. And we're going to do this on a timeline basis, right? So this is going to be year zero, year one, year two, year three. And the idea is going to be that you're going to put in like your age and how much money you have and that this input will, you know, build out this table for you down here at the bottom, right? That's kind of what we're going to do. So let's get to it with a brand new sheet. Let's come up with some very basic input tables uh, or some very basic inputs. For example, let's use, let me lower my desk just a hair. Let's use, uh, initial investment meaning how much money you have when you start and i like when i build these things out i like to have a um i like to have just some numbers to just help me think through the model that i'm going to build uh turn into a dollar sign a a pretty spreadsheet is a strong spreadsheet uh, let's call it a monthly investment. I think we're going to build this on a year by year basis instead of a month by month basis, just to keep it simple. But yeah, I mean, later when you get all fancy with this, you can turn it into a monthly spreadsheet. I mean, that's fine. And let's say you're going to do a hundred bucks a month. Again, this is just to get started. You can do your own numbers after the fact. Um, growth rate, right? This looks a lot like expected return as opposed to ah, close parentheses. Oh, that's not what I want. Expected return as opposed to actual return. Eh, maybe I don't like that paragraph the way it looks. Let me get rid of this guy. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. We'll leave it alone. Uh, this one's a percentage. Let's do an expected return of 8%. Again, we're just plugging in some numbers to see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and include your current age. Uh, current age and let's go ahead and include your retirement age right um, these guys are inputs and I like to use the cell style formatting that's already built for you you see this one's input over here on the right it tells orange it tells your it tells future you it tells your clients it tells your boss hey only mess with this stuff these are my inputs don't mess with anything else uh, year we're gonna start with zero and every other year after that is going to be zero plus one. So that's going to be one. And then later when we build this out, you know, it'll go one, two, three, four. Age is going to be whatever your age is. So let's use a pointer to age. I work with a lot of college students. So let's make, you know, let's say they just recently graduated, right? They have their first job, they're 23. Same thing here equals 23 plus one. So all of these are going to be the next year and the next year and the next year. And obviously, if you're a little older, say you're 30, it'll automatically switch, right? But again, I work with a lot of college kids, so they're not kids, but college kids. And so let's put 23. The scenario here is you just graduated from college, you're making your first income, how much money should I put into a retirement package? And we almost always use 60 as our retirement age because we're dealing with investments. We're going to deal with qualified accounts, which means you can draw without penalty 59 and a half. So we just say 60. Obviously, there's discussion, debate. You get to put in whatever number you want, right? Um, and now we begin our actual table. We're going to go with our beginning balance. And then we're going to have contributions to that balance on a monthly basis. We're going to, we're going to average it out to annuals. Uh, and then there's going to be a growth on that and then capital G growth, growth. And then we're going to have an ending balance. The way we're going to think about this model is on an annual basis, right? Let me center and center and wrap and make that nice and pretty. I can expand this one out. I know it's not exactly super clean, but you know what? We can make these all the same size, but a pretty spreadsheet is a strong spreadsheet. So let's just put a line on here as well. You know, take the time to make it clean. It'll let you also think pretty clearly. My beginning balance is, you know, grandma gives you a hundred or a thousand dollars at graduation. You decide to drop that into your retirement account because you are smart. 
we can F4 that to lock it up. And then that's a thousand bucks every time. Let's say she gives you 1500 instead of the other one. You know, it changes the number. Okay, that's cool. Contributions, because we're doing this on an annual basis, is going to be my monthly contribution. And I'm using monthly because it's easier for you to think about. Sometimes you get paid bi-weekly. Sometimes you get paid monthly. It's just easier to run a monthly budget. It's hard to convince somebody to throw in $4,000 a year into the retirement program. It's not hard to convince somebody to throw in $300 a month, right? Or whatever the numbers are. But I'm going to multiply that times 12. Again, this is a rough estimate. And, and you can be more specific, you know, with your stuff. So my growth then, the scenario is I start with 1500 I contribute 1200 and then the money grows over the course of the year. So this is going to be the beginning balance plus whatever I contribute to it times 12 because it's 12, no, times my growth rate, F4, that one. But this isn't going to work because of the multiplication. So I need to come back and make sure that I put parentheses around this right please what is it please um please excuse my dear aunt sally um doo -doo -doo -doo. and that's 200 and my ending balance is then this the beginning balance plus whatever i contributed to it through in the year plus whatever growth i had over the course of the year and that's my ending balance now you can be a little bit more sophisticated with this we're going to construct these big models so that we can play with them some more. The rub is that the second line actually is a little different from the first line. So you can come up here and maybe remind yourself of that fact. Change this color to something else and be like, hey, look, first line's a little different. That's fine. We begin January 1st of, ye of the next year with the ending balance. That's our beginning balance. That makes sense. The year ends. The year begins. Uh, my contributions are the same, so I'm going to just control C, control V. Oh, no, it didn't work. Probably because I didn't lock something up. Yes, my growth rate. No, I don't want my growth rate here. I want my monthly investment, and I probably need to F4 that one and lock it up, right? Good lesson there. I don't want that. I want it black. Automatic. Okay. Growth should be the same. Yeah, growth should be the same because that is locked up. So I can go control C, control V. Again, I want it black. And my ending balance should be the same. I can also control D down and also I want it black. At this point, you can use my favorite little trick function and that's this little square at the bottom right hand corner, the green one, not this little function deal. And just double click on this bad boy. If I can get to it, double click, boom, and it does them all. Right. What we're going to do next is just copy paste this or just drag it out. Grab that bottom right hand corner and drag it down until you get to more or less 60. Not there yet. Maybe a couple of extra years so that you can fluctuate this thing. And we're aiming for this guy here at 60. Wow. If you start with a thousand bucks, you start with a thousand bucks. This is the one that I'm focused on right now. You start with a thousand bucks and you put in a hundred dollars a month at 8% average growth over the course of 40 years, mas o menos, more or less, and you end up with $300,000. Not too shabby, but I don't want it over there. I want it up here so I can see it, right? So I'm going to create a new box that says balance at retirement, right? Thank you for the autocorrect Excel. And I'm going to use a V lookup. This is probably the most, this is one of the most wonderful uh, admin and database people love V lookup. It means vertical lookup. You need three inputs. Number one, I need my retirement age, right? I'm going to F for that guy to lock it up. 60 comma table array. Now I'm going to create a table where what I'm looking for is in the left hand column. So this guy right here, age. And then I'm going to create a table including all of the information, control, shift, down arrow, gets the whole block. And you can see that I'm going to come down this first column in red to 60, and then it'll give me 313. That's what I'm looking for, right? So what I want to look up, the table array and the index number. The index number is, let me do this. Can, can I do this with the drawing? Oh, I can't. It won't let me. The index number is one, two, three, four, five. And I'll show it to you in a second. Uh, this is column one, two, three, four, five, right? So when I highlight 
when I highlight this block in red and I bring it up here to this dude, it shows me column one, two, three, four, five. That's this five right here. It tells me that I'm going to draw it off on the other one, right? That's how that is constructed. Let me erase all of this because I don't need it and turn this into a dollar sign and an output. I'm telling people don't mess with this box. This is an output of a function. Leave it alone, right? Uh, I have constructed something here for you not to mess with. Uh, balance at retirement is 313. So let's say that you start at, or you change your retirement date to 61. This box should automatically adjust for whatever that is, right? And now you can do some really fancy things trying to project out your retirement. Well, what if I do $200 a month? Ooh, very nice. What if I do $300 a month? Even better. Let's get to a million. 350 maybe? Oh no. What does this mean? When you get a bunch of these uh, pound signs, it means that the number is too big. I like the idea that the number is too big. 1.0 million. So just stretch out the box a little bit. Matter of fact, let's stretch out all these boxes a little bit because it's not going to fit the million dollar mark. Something like that. Yeah, so this is the most basic um, investment projection you can do. The other thing I might do is, as long as we're here, what is this? Let me delete that. This is the most basic one. The other thing I might do here is get the ending balance and turn it into a bar graph because I like bar graphs. That's not what, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll up to the top first. Oh, that's a histogram, not a bar graph. And then something like that. You like that? Do you want to do a line chart instead, maybe? Does it work better with a line chart? You get to pick whatever you want here. It doesn't bother me. Let's do some recommended charts. See what the guy tells you. Yeah, I like the bar chart. I'm going to use the bar chart. All right. Zoom out just a little bit and kind of put this guy over here on the left. And now, maybe it's a little small if you, if you have some reading issues. I just bought my first pair of reading glasses a couple of months ago and I'm getting there. And now you can see what this looks like, right? 350, 100, the curvature moves, the graph shifts, everything is beautiful. Let's go back to 350 because we're going to aim for that one point. You know, it's not, you know what, it doesn't even include it, but this isn't, this are years, not age. So here you can do some other fancy stuff. Um, I want to change the axis, you know, to, I don't want it to be automatic. I want text axis and do some inputs, uh, format axis. Oh no. Oh yeah. Okay. So this isn't actually here. It is up here at select data, select data. Here's my horizontal edit. And then I want to bring in age control shift down arrow. That highlights the entire block for me. I hit OK. There's all the ages. Let me come back up to the top. Boom. There are your ages. Here's 60. This is one of my favorite things to do with clients is I will do a right click, add the data label, and there's the balance of the account, right? I put it up here. Maybe you want to make it bigger. That's how you retire at 60, right? And then you can change stuff. 450. Boom. It changes the number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can play with it from there on out.